Hi, I'm Tom Persky, Vice President of Professional and Consumer Outreach for Iris Vision Global. The Iris Vision Low Vision Wearable Technology has been developed in 2007, early 2017 and the company uh, is located in Silicon Valley in Pleasanton, California. Iris Vision was a collaboration between um, Dr. Frank Werblin, who's one of the co-founders, from uh, a neuroscientist from the University of California, Berkeley. And also, he collaborated with um, Johns Hopkins with Dr. Bob Nassoff, who's been involved with uh, research into many wearable devices going all the way back to the original Elvis system. They collaborated with uh, the software giants from Silicon Valley and uh, the president, Ahmad Khan, who has a team of software engineers who liked the concepts of what Dr. Massoff, Dr. Werblin had put together and be able to develop a platform that allows uh, the use of the Samsung, currently the Samsung uh, VR headset, which uh, includes the smartphone, the camera, and the screens, the high resolution camera and the high resolution screens, along with the headset that has controls on it. So the software uh, persons have really seen this as a platform that can be built on not only for version 1 or version 2.0, which we're currently at, we're already working on version 3.0 and beyond to uh, help people with vision impairments be able to read, to write, to watch TV, uh, to go mobile, and be able to take it with them for shopping and enjoying museums and art galleries. And so uh, the modes that have been developed uh, with the guidance of uh, Dr. Werblin, Dr. Massoff, have really uh, begun to expand what a low vision wearable device uh, can do for people. This device is simple to use, it's, it's worn right over a person's uh, pair of prescription glasses, and it's uh, taken the country by storm in so many areas. Uh, we had uh, worked at the uh, Senior Vice President of the Chicago Lighthouse for 10 years where we uh, experimented and developed a protocol of all the low vision wearables. By far we had the greatest success uh, with the Iris Vision, and especially as initial stage. And now the product has grown uh, so much uh, that some of the research that has been done, especially from, from Johns Hopkins, uh, has now gone to the uh, National Eye Institute recently gave a very large grant for us to continue the research and development of the product. We're located in many of the prestigious universities, uh, the Stanford University, the Byers Eye Institute, uh, UCLA, uh, Johns Hopkins as I mentioned, uh, Massachusetts Eye and Ear, uh, the Chicago Lighthouse, as I mentioned, is one of the largest low vision centers in the country, as well as uh, many uh, low vision centers now uh, throughout the states uh, in Canada. We recently also worked with Vision Australia, who is showing the device throughout 22 centers in Australia. So we are definitely going global and using the term Iris Vision Global is our company name with the Iris Vision. So we uh, look forward to having you ex uh, learn a little bit about the product and uh, that's a little bit about our company. One of the things we like to talk about here in this video is to how to prepare for a demonstration. So when you get a lead from a family member or a client, you want to establish rapport and trust with that person. One of the things that I always felt was very important is to talk directly to the person who has low vision. Um, you'll get lots of family members wanting to put input into a situation, which is good because it gives you uh, kind of a bigger picture. But when you uh, insist on talking to the person who has low vision, 
you're going to get the right perspective in terms of are they prepared, uh, do they, what we call in, in, in psychology, take ownership to the situation. That is, it'll help you to understand that uh, maybe this is something that they really want or maybe it's something that they're being pushed into by maybe a family member or a friend. And so I think that's uh, very important. One of the things we often talk about is helping them understand that this device will help with everyday living tasks. And uh, most of the low vision uh, types of tasks that we know in research, many people have more than one device. They might have a, a magnifying glass for seeing a price tag in the store. And they might have something to see uh, in the distance, like a telescope or something like that. But uh, with the iris vision, it does many of these things all at once, close up, uh, intermediate distances, like uh, playing cards or music, and then also distance tasks, like being able to watch TV, being able to go to a, a concert or a play, uh, being able to go to an art gallery or a museum. So these are some of the things that you can begin to talk to the person about and think of it as near, intermediate, and distance and talk to them about that. One of the things I always mention is uh, if a person were to come for a demonstration, let's say next week, let's start writing down some of the things that you're either frustrated doing or have uh, just given up doing. So what would be the list? Because each person, of course, is different. Um, so does the person want to obviously do things like read their mail, uh, write checks, uh, be able to see the thermostat on the wall, be able to see the buttons on the microwave, uh, be able to go into the pantry and actually pick out different things, or even while shopping out in public, being able to choose things off a shelf. There's so many items like that, but I think it's important that you hear from the person's own list. So if they were to take a week and just think of things in their own normal everyday life, <clears throat> they would uh, write down probably 30 or 40 uh, different things. And so that would be the uh, starting point for them and for you to help you understand what their life is like. I often tell people just the day before you come, I'd like you to take that list and to actually write it in order of priority. So what's like the most important things for you as a person? I call it your top 10 list. So uh, each person again is different. There might be somebody who does sewing or crafts. There might be somebody who has a special hobby. Um, there might be uh, a person who reads a special magazine or Bible or uh, something that's very important to them. So once we know what their top 10 list is and they come uh, with that information, that's going to help you uh, quite a bit.